the best cardiologist should focus not just on procedures like stents, but on preventing the progression of heart disease. See, many patients have lots of calcified plaques that aren't causing symptoms or showing up on stress tests. See, the key is to stabilize those plaques so they don't rupture, which causes heart attacks. And plaque buildup in the arteries can break open and cause blood clots. Bigger clots block more of the arteries. The size of the clot depends on few factors. One, inflammation makes the plaque more likely to crack open. Two, thicker, stickier blood can make the clots get bigger faster. This can happen due to increased coagulation or from glycation effects. Glycation is when sugar molecules bind to proteins in the blood making the blood thicker and more prone to clotting. And with the increased coagulation, means that when the plaque breaks open, bigger clots can form more quickly. So the combination of inflammation causing a plaque rupture, along with thicker, stickier blood from coagulation and glycation, allows for faster growth of dangerous blood clots that can severely block the arteries. And this accelerates the progression of the heart disease. So that said, guys, what I'm going to do is in every category, I will discuss the supplements that should be utilized. And at the end of the video, I will actually list the dose intake. So for this category, you would be using benfotamine, carnosine, alpha-lipoic acid, the R form, uh, vitamin E tocotrinols, neurokinase, and nitrate supplement. So to evaluate risk, cardiologists should look at inflammation markers, blood clotting tendency, rate of calcium score increase, and more. Nutritional deficiencies, processed foods, and compounds from cooking can also make arteries harden much faster. Eating a lot of unhealthy vegetable oils can also cause oxidative stress, which speeds up the building of plaque in the arteries. Another one is mental stress also makes the problem worse. When the body's under stress, it goes into a fight or flight. This makes the platelets in the blood stickier and more likely to form clots. So the combination of unhealthy diet with too many oxidized oils plus high levels of mental stress both contribute to faster plaque formation and increased clotting in the arteries. So this accelerates the progression of heart disease. So the key is to reduce oxidative stress from diet and also find ways to manage mental stress in order to slow down the dangerous plaque buildup and clotting that can lead to heart attacks and other cardiovascular problems. So supplements like taurine, magnesium, L-theanine, and altyrosine. Most people don't really need to get procedures like stent or bypass surgery for their heart. Those treatments should only be used if the person is having symptoms of heart problems or if tests show they definitely have poor blood flow. Doing those procedures when they're not really needed can actually make things worse in the long run. It can actually limit the treatment options available later on if, let's say, the person's heart condition gets worse and they do need something like bypass surgery. The most important thing is to only get major procedures like stent or bypass if there are clear signs the person really needs them based on their symptoms and the results of medical tests. Doing those procedures without a good reason can end up reducing the treatments that can be used in the future if the person's heart declines. So it's better to try other approaches first, like lifestyle changes before resorting to those more invasive procedures. And the most important things for heart health are lifestyle changes like eating a healthy diet, managing insulin resistance, getting good night's sleep, activating the rest and digest, part of the nervous system. See, making these lifestyle improvements doesn't just help with heart disease, it can also lower the risk of other serious problems. The key is focusing on these overall healthy lifestyle changes, not just a procedures like stent or surgery. So taking care of the basics like diet, sleep, and managing insulin can go a long way in preventing a wide range of health problems. 
especially when it comes to the heart and cardiovascular system. So that said, here are a list for stabilizing plaques and reducing progression with a specific dose intake for the supplementation. In addition, I did write an ebook about roughly two years ago. I will have the link listed within the video description. Eat an anti-inflammatory diet, be nothing processed. Think of a single natural ingredient, not multiple ingredients or fake food. Two, Consider supplements like vitamin K2 in the form of MK7 of 10,000 micrograms or higher, which helps regulate calcium to bones, instead increase uh, of calcification. Polyphenols, 2,000 milligrams minimum. Magnesium elemental, up to 1,200. Each garlic extract, under 3 grams. And vitamin D3 of 1,500 IU per 25 pound of body weight. Others could be added would be such as vitamin E tocotrinols, vitamin A, D ribose, creatine, will all stabilize uh, plaque. Three, manage stress with relaxation practices, breathing exercises, grounding, and of course using supplements like L-theanine, anywhere between 200 to 1200 milligrams per day on an empty stomach, and using l of 500 to 1500 milligrams per day on an empty stomach as well, to avoid the chronic sympathetic activation. Four, optimize your sleep. Poor sleep is linked to calcification and cardiac events. Perfect stack would be magnesium glycinate of 200 milligrams, GABA 100 milligrams, L-theanine 200 milligrams, and one tablespoon of cherry tart. This would be your ultimate stack 30 minutes prior of sleeping. Five, use a blood test to identify and treat issues like insulin resistance, lipid abnormalities, and vascular inflammation. So the key takeaway is that preventing heart disease progression requires a comprehensive lifestyle approach guided by in-depth testing that addresses root causes like inflammation, chlorine, oxidation, and chronic stress. Procedures have their place, but shouldn't be relied upon exclusively. With the right habits and medical management, plaques can be stabilized to reduce the risk of rupture and allow patients to live well with heart disease rather than die from it.